The humble mason bee is an often overlooked player in the pollinating world. While the honey bee is usually the first thing people think of when they hear the word bee, the mason bee quietly goes about its pollinating activities in a much more efficient manner. Mason bees are important contributors to any nature community, pollinating early blooming flowers, bushes, fruit trees and berry shrubs. They are especially effective pollinators of orchard fruit crops. On average, they pollinate 95% of the flowers they visit, while the honeybee only pollinates around 5%. In this video, we'll learn all the steps to keeping mason bees in your own yard, so you and your neighborhood can benefit from them year after year. Setting up a mason bee house. A mason bee house is a simple structure that holds either tubes or trays, or has cavities cut directly into it. They can be purchased at a store, or you can make one at home. There are endless designs and materials to choose from, but the important thing is that the tubes or cavities are made to the correct length and diameter. The ideal length is anywhere between 4 to 8 inches with a diameter of around 5 16 One end of the tube or cavity should be sealed off to prevent parasites from entering. There is no exact height to mount a mason bee house, but anywhere between 5 and 10 feet should work just fine. It should be under a covered area, out of the rain and facing in an eastern or southeastern direction. The bees need the morning sun to warm up their wings before they can fly. Lining the nesting tubes with paper makes harvesting the cocoons a lot easier down the line. To do this you'll need some paper, a pair of scissors, a chopstick and some nesting tubes. After cutting the paper into 2 inch strips, the chopstick is used to wrap the paper around on an angle. The paper can be simple printer paper, parchment, wax, or even from a brown grocery bag. It's important to wrap the paper as tightly as possible, ensuring there is a little overlap as you go. It can then be inserted into a tube. Carefully remove the chopstick leaving the paper behind. One end needs to be twisted and firmly compressed in order to seal it effectively. The other end can be cut flush with the tube and then open neatly with the chopstick. Several tubes can be bundled together for convenience. The tube bundles can then be loaded into the houses. Filling the house with tubes will ensure the bees have plenty of options for their nesting preferences. The best time to set up your mason bee house is just before you put out your cocoons. This is usually around the beginning of spring, in March or April, depending on your location. Ultimately, it depends more on the weather than anything else, and there needs to be some early blooming flowers available for the bees to get some food. Putting out mason bee cocoons. Putting the cocoons in little trays or jar lids will help prevent them from falling out of the hatching area if it gets a little windy. It will also keep them hidden from any hungry visitors. Mason bee cocoons should be set out in a dry covered area located near the nesting houses. This will encourage the bees to select the tubes you have provided. A proper bee management strategy can be used to work around the risk of a late-season frost. This situation can hamper the bees' ability to feed themselves, even leading to their untimely deaths. One strategy to hedge against this is to release your bees in two phases, keeping one group in the fridge and delaying their release for several weeks. Mason Bee Cocoon Hatching Mason bees will begin to hatch when the daily temperature is consistently above 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius. In nature, using their strong mandibles, the bees will first chew their way out of their cocoons and then break through the mud walls that divide up their tube. The male bees nearer the front of each tube will hatch first. They are easily recognizable with their tufts of white hair atop their head and across their thorax. They also have longer antennae and are slightly smaller than the females. The female bees will not emerge for another week or so, ensuring there are plenty of male bees available for mating. 
For cocoons that have already been harvested, the bees only need to exit their cocoons. Once these males are free, they will clean themselves, head off to find some food, and then wait patiently for the females to appear. The male bees are very docile by nature. They do not have stingers and can be handled with care if you want to get a closer look. Despite only living for about two weeks after hatching, these little bees play a vital role in nature, so it's important to take care when around them. If you look around your yard, you may see them sunbathing on nearby plants, walls or even the ground. Be sure to step with caution. When the females do eventually emerge, they'll immediately be approached by numerous males that have been waiting around the hatching area. They'll mate with several of these males on their first day, saving the sperm to be used later when they begin to lay eggs. The females will become less attractive to males the more they mate, and when they've finished they'll go away from the nesting area for several days until they're ready to begin laying their eggs. Mason Bee Nesting and Egg Laying Female mason bees will begin the nesting stage by seeking out and selecting a suitable cavity to lay their eggs. In nature, this may be in a hollow plant stem, a tree crevice, or a small wood tunnel made by a beetle. By providing cardboard nesting tubes, we're helping the bees immensely, as they can focus their energy on sourcing food and building their nests, instead of searching for suitable lodging. Once a tube has been selected, the bee will begin creating a pollen bundle, mixed with nectar. This bundle will require approximately 25 foraging trips to various flowers around the neighborhood. When the pollen ball is big enough, the bee will lay a single egg on top of the bundle. The egg will be small, white, and semi-translucent, similar to a tiny grain of rice. She'll then source out some local muddy clay and build a tiny partition wall, sealing the egg and pollen bundle inside. With this first cell complete, the bee will begin the entire process over, starting a new pollen ball at the base of the wall she just completed. She'll do this over and over again, until the tube is full of little cells, each containing an egg and pollen bundle. After the last cell is complete, the bee will build a second outer wall, to add an extra layer of protection to the tube entrance. With the tube sealed, the bee will now search for another cavity to begin another cell collection. Each female bee will lay approximately 25 to 30 eggs during the nesting season. This will be done over the course of several weeks, with the bee laying one to two eggs per day. Each egg will hatch after about a week, and the resulting larva will go through five stages of development. It will eat the pollen bundle as it grows, before finally spinning a cocoon. Once in the cocoon, the pupa will develop into an adult bee and remain in the cocoon for about eight months. Storing Mason Bee Nests and Tubes The Mason Bee season is quite short, beginning with the spring and only lasting a few months, before all the bees die off while their offspring develop in their cocoons and then hibernate for the rest of the year. Although not technically necessary, it's a good idea to take down the nesting tubes and houses and store them in boxes in the garage after the season has ended. This will help protect the cocoons from any predators and parasites. Harvesting and storing mason bee cocoons The best time to harvest mason bee cocoons is between October and November. This will ensure the bees have fully developed into adulthood and are already in their hibernation period. Giving the mason bees a variety of nesting options during the season will ensure the bees can find something they like. This bee house is made from simple 2x4 lumber with holes drilled inside. Each block will first be attached to the table. A saw is used to cut a small groove across the entranceways. Mason bees leave a small gap at the end of each tube by building two walls for extra protection. This sawing will not be disturbing any of the cocoons inside. With all the grooves cut, a chisel is used to split the wood along the first two nesting holes. This will reveal the cocoons, making it relatively easy to extract them. A chopstick can be used to gently prod each cocoon out of the tube. It is important to be very careful during this extraction stage, as the bees are in hibernation and they should be disturbed as little as possible. 
Now technically, the cocoons could be left in the block of wood over the winter, and the bees could dig their way out in the spring. In practice, it is better to harvest and clean them, as this will help reduce the risk of disease and parasite activity. A mason bee will determine the sex of an egg by choosing whether or not to fertilize it with the sperm that it has stored in its body. A fertilized egg will develop into a female, while an unfertilized egg will become a male. The next type of 2x4 block has holes cut all the way through. These holes are lined with paper tubes. By unscrewing the back section piece, the tubes can be easily pulled out using the folded over end tabs. Unrolling the paper tube reveals the cocoons inside. It is easy to see here how the nesting chambers are sealed with the little mud cylinder walls. This mud is where the bees get their name. The paper lined tubes are also very easy to process. Using the pull tab on the end, the paper liner simply slides out the back of the tube. This doesn't damage the tube in any way, meaning it can be used year after year, simply by adding a new paper liner each time. As the paper is unraveled, the cocoons are separated out from the mud walls and any other debris. Sometimes there will be unused pollen bundles or compromised bee cocoons. It's important to separate these out, as we do not want the bee colony becoming infected by parasites or pollen mites. Here is an example of a common predator, the parasitic calcid wasp. It sneaks into mason bee nesting tubes, paralyzes the mason bee larvae, and then lays its eggs inside the cocoon. The wasp larvae will then eat the mason bee larvae as they develop into adult wasps. Another common pest is the Houdini fly. It will lay its eggs directly on the pollen bundle, and when they develop, the fly maggots will eat all the pollen. It's important to watch for Houdini flies throughout the season, and kill them immediately when spotted. To ensure that the mason bees have the best chance of success, it's a good idea to clean the cocoons before they're stored over winter. Cleaning the cocoons can be done using some basic household items and a little water with bleach. First, pour some lukewarm water into a baking tray and measure out a small amount of bleach. A 5% bleach water solution should be enough. After mixing the two, carefully add the cocoons. Using a stick, gently clean the cocoons by swirling them around the tray. All the leftover pollen, dirt and fly maggots will be separated from the cocoons at this stage. It's important to be thorough and take time with this process. After a good rinse, use a sieve to collect and remove the cocoons. The dirty water can be disposed of, and the tray can be cleaned. The cleaning process is repeated again using only warm water. This process can be done as many times as is necessary to ensure that the cocoons are completely clean. The next step involves spreading the cocoons out evenly on a tray for drying. They can be covered with more paper towel to begin the drying process. It's important to only use light pressure. Let the paper towel do its job. After replacing the wet paper towel, carefully inspect the cocoons looking for any that may be compromised or still a little dirty. If there are any that are still dirty, they can be rinsed further. If any look compromised, they can be discarded. The clean cocoons can now be left out in the open to dry for several hours. When dry, they can be transferred to a new paper towel and then stored in a plastic container. Make sure there are little holes in the container to let air in and moisture out. You may choose to separate the cocoons into female and male bees, so they can be distributed across several bee houses in the spring, in a more even distribution ratio. Having approximately two males for every female, will ensure all the females will have a mating partner. The female bee cocoons are slightly larger than the male ones when held side by side. The storage containers can now be left in a dry cool place like a garage, for most of the winter months. They can then be transferred to the fridge in February or just before release time. If you're just starting out and don't have any mason bee cocoons, try asking around your community to see if anyone has extra bees they can give you.
The bee community is very generous, as we do this for nature, not ourselves. If you still can't find any, check in your local garden store, or even online. As for tubes, they can also be purchased online. Well folks, I hope you've enjoyed this little documentary, and decide to give mason bees a chance in your own yards. It is rewarding in so many ways. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please subscribe.